Hey everybody, welcome to Petco Park here in San Diego. It's opening day 2016 for the Dodgers and the Padres from Petco Park using payoff pitch baseball and the new released 2016 set. So we've got the opening day lineups as they were on the actual April 4th day. And we'll run through those lineups real quick. Starting pitchers, first of all, for the Dodgers is Clayton Kershaw. And he'll be opposed by Tyson Ross of the Padres. Let's look at the lineup for the Dodgers. Leading off will be second baseman Chase Utley. Batting second at shortstop is Corey Seager. Batting third at third base is Justin Turner. Batting cleanup at first base is Adrian Gonzalez. Batting fifth in right field is Yasiel Puig. Batting sixth in left field is Carl Crawford. Batting seventh in center field is Jock Peterson. And hitting eighth and catching A.J. Ellis. Batting ninth is Kershaw, and he will be hitting off of pitcher hitting card number five. All right, for the Padres, leading off center fielder John Jay. Batting second is catcher Derek Norris. Hitting third in right field is Matt Kemp. Batting cleanup at first base is Will Myers. Batting fifth at shortstop is Alexei Ramirez. Hitting sixth and playing third base is Yarjervis Salarte. Batting seventh and playing left field is Melvin, don't call me BJ Upton. And batting ninth, I'm sorry, batting eighth and playing second base is Corey Spangenberg. Batting ninth is Tyson Ross, and he will be using batter card number three. So, and we've also got, I went ahead and wrote down the opening day bullpen and bench players for each team. And as they're used, we'll wipe them off, and that way you can keep track of who's available and who's not. And so, particularly in a National League game where you're going to be using a lot more pinch hitters and so forth, uh, it's nice to know who's available and who's not. So, got the dice all ready, the score sheet's all filled out, ready to go. And Tyson Ross has finished his warm up tosses. Chase Utley is in the box, and we are ready to go. There's been, uh, I think, enough payoff pitch baseball videos out there now that we can. Uh, Issue the how-tos and just go straight into the game. So what I like to do, though, sometimes, and a lot of times, is, is I like to split up the 2D6 roll and the 2D10 roll. So we'll roll the 2D6s and see what Tyson Ross brings to the table. It's an 8, and that's tough. So Tyson Ross has put a tough one in there on Chase Utley. See if he can handle it. It's a 41. So a 41 for Chase Utley against a righty and a tough bracket is a strikeout. So Tyson Ross... Opens the ball game, striking out Chase Utley. And that'll bring up Corey Seager. It's an 11. So that's defense. So immediately we have to go to our defensive chart and see who the defender that we're checking on is. The D10s will say that. It's a 40. So the D10's 40 says we're looking at an error check on the pitcher Ross. So if you look at Tyson Ross's uh, fielding, he is a fielding number two in the error check. His, C, his range of C is error check is two. So in Petco Park, number two, we've got a one through 52 is going to be an error, and a 53 through 99, he will make the play. So we roll the two T10s again and see if it's 52 or higher, or 53 or higher. It's a 91, so he did make the play. A 91. So that's going to most likely be a ground up, but we'll roll the two D6s just to check it for sure on the out chart. It's a nine, so the out chart under pitcher, number nine, is in fact a ground ball. It was not a pop-up or a line drive. It was a ground ball. So it's a 1-3 ground out, and Corey Seager is gone. Brings up Justin Turner. I believe he just got a big contract from the Dodgers. It's a five. Five is in play on Tyson Ross. And it's a 19. Low numbers in play are usually pretty good. 19 against a righty in play. That's a base hit, 12 to 36. So... Base hit for Justin Turner, a two-out single. And that brings up Adrian Gonzalez, veteran first baseman. Seven. Seven is in play again on Ross. And we get a 61 this time. So a 61 in play is out of range. 61 will take us to a F9 fly out to right field. So Adrian Gonzalez hits a can of corn out to right field that Matt Kemp handles easily. And the Dodgers are done here in the top of the first. So after half an inning, it is Dodgers nothing and San Diego coming to bat. 
All right, Clayton Kershaw finishing his warm-up tosses and stepping into the box is John Jay, lefty on lefty. John Jay, the former Cardinal. Here is the result for Kershaw. It's an eight, which is tough, not surprising. So John Jay will have to fight this off. It's a 25. That's probably not going to be very good for him. Tough 25 against a lefty. One to 45 is a strikeout. So Clayton Kershaw starts off his season with a K. Not the most unlikely thing in the world. It's a seven, so that's in play. So Derek Norris has got one chance to put it in play here. It's a 56, but that's going to be out of range. 56, he's got it off the end of the bat. Easy fly out to Puig and right. Two down. And that'll bring up Matt Kemp, former Dodger. It's a seven, which is in play again. So Kemp with a chance to do something. It's a six, so he will do something with it. A six in play against a lefty is a double. One to seven is a double. So Matt Kemp gets a hold of one, drives it into the gap at Petco for a double. Two out, two out double, and that brings up Will Myers with a chance to put the Padres in the lead. And if you remember during the season, San Diego went about, I think, the whole series against the Dodgers without scoring. So this would be news if they could get a score here. Six. Six, though, is tough on Kershaw. So Will Myers will have to handle a tough Kershaw pitch, and he won't do it. 88. Well in the outrange. 88's a ground ball to short. Handled over there by Seeger, and the Padres are gone here in the first. So after one complete from Petco, it is the Dodgers nothing and the Padres nothing. Top of the second, Tyson Ross back out on the mound. We'll be facing Yasiel Puig. It's, a, it's an eight. And that is tough on Ross. And 52 for Puig. Tough 52 against a righty. He found a base hit. So Yasiel Puig was able to fight off that tough pitch, deposit it for a base hit. And the Dodgers have the leadoff batter on here in the second for lefty Carl Crawford, left fielder. To seven. Seven is in play. So Crawford. 79, 79 in play as well out of range. 79 is a ground ball to short, so it could be two. The 2D6 roll is a seven, and the double play rating for Crawford is an eight, so that's greater than seven. Ross's double play rating is an eight, that's greater than seven, so therefore it is a double play. Six, four, three, turned by the Padres. And two quick outs. Crawford not as fast as he used to be, got doubled up. It's Hard to beat out a double play when it's grounded so hard at the shortstop. It's a pretty typical tailor-made double play. So here is Jock Peterson now with two outs and the base is empty. It's a 10, which is also in play. Peterson, a 2. So a 2 in play is a double. Jock Peterson, 1 to 12 is a double. So Jock Peterson, a 2-out double. Much like Kemp had a 2-out double his last in the last inning. So now A.J. Ellis is up, number 8 hitter. Kershaw is on deck, so they could walk Ellis and pitch to Kershaw, but they're going to take their chances. They want Kershaw leading off the next inning. Two is in play for Ross, and it's a 23 for A.J. Ellis. So that's a base hit. Base hit, so the, the strategy may have backfired. Base hit for A.J. Ellis, and with two outs, if a runner has a speed rating higher than six, or six or higher, he will score. Peterson has a run rating of six, so he will score on that single. And perhaps the Padres should have intentionally walked Ellis to get to Kershaw. They didn't do it, so they, they paid the price. Now here is Kershaw. He's going to be batting off a of pitcher hitting card number five. It's a seven, which is in play off of Ross. In play 11. So we'll check pitcher hitting card number five. In play number 11 is actually going to be a base hit. So a base hit. And Ellis, who does not run well, actually runs at a 7. I take that back. It's a 7. Now, on a base hit in play, let's see what the charts say on this. Sometimes you get that extra base. Uh, let's see here. Is it going to tell me? That's the one downside to this game, if there is one, is sometimes the charts can be a little confusing because you don't know who gets what. So, let's see here. The base hit... And we look at the lower die on the 2D6, that's a 3. The runner at first, the runner advancement. 
says here with two outs runner rated six or higher advances two bases so there you go that that settles that so Ellis will make it to third on the base hit by Kershaw but if not then you would check the use the the low number on the 2d sixes set who was on base compare it against that number and see how many bases they got that's what the runner advancement chart is there for all right so sorry about that little confusion there but now runners at the corners for Chase Utley at least struck out his first time up. Ross trying to get out of this. It's a 5, which is in play again. And it's a 20. So these low numbers are helping the Dodgers for the in play. 20 in play is another base hit. This one by Utley. So Utley will single. And that will score Ellis from third to make it a 2 nothing ball game. Kershaw will have to stop at second. They're not even going to risk that. They're not going to have him running the bases like that. So he's going station to station. It's 2 nothing Dodgers. Here's Corey Seager. That's a 9, which is patient. Patient on Ross. And we got a 73. So a patient 73. Just missed it. Seven, 64 would have been a hit by pitch, but 73 is a ground ball to second. And that's going to actually be a force play. So Corey Seager actually will technically reach, but... It's, the lead runner Utley is out on a 4-6 force play. Not that it really matters. And that's it for the Dodgers. But they do pick up the two runs. And after an inning, inning and a half here at Petco, it is the Dodgers 2 and the Padres nothing as they have an uphill battle to come back against Clayton Kershaw already down 2 nothing. Alexi Ramirez steps in the box against Kershaw. It's an 8. 8 is tough on Kershaw. And we get a 93, so that's not going to be a good result. 93 is a fly to left for Ramirez. One away, and that brings up Salarte, the third baseman. Salarte, an 8, is tough. And a 4. Tough 4. Those low numbers on tough are just usually automatic strikeouts, and in this case they are. Or it is. So Salarte down on strikes. Brings up Melvin Upton. He used to be called BJ. Now he wants to be called Melvin. Eight. Eight is tough. Tough 54 against a lefty is a strikeout. 1 to 73 would have been a strikeout. So Melvin did not hit the high note on that one. He is out of there. And after two complete, it is the Dodgers two and the Padres nothing. Justin Turner steps in for the top of the third as Ross tries to regroup from that last inning. Five is in play again. A lot of in plays on Tyson Ross's card. And that's a 28. 28 in play is a base hit. So if he had had some toughs on his card, more toughs, then they would be usually be strikeouts. But since they're in play, it's a, it's a base hit for Justin Turner. Another base hit. And that will bring up Adrian Gonzalez. Gonzalez, a 7, which is another in play. And it's a 98 this time, so that will help the Padres. 98's a fly to left. So Adrian goes the other way, but didn't get much of it. Handled easily out there by Upton. One away for Yasiel Puig. Puig, base hit his first time up. It's a 9, so we're under patient. And it's a 7, zero, 7 so that's going to be a walk. Patient, low number in a patient category is almost always a walk. So Puig will reach, bump Turner up to second base, runners at first and second with one out for Crawford. See if we can get a tough category for Ross one of these days. 10, nope, that's in play again. And it's a 77, so a 77, whoops, that was a 7 there. 77 for Crawford. 77 is a fly out to center field. So two outs as Ross tries to meander through this third inning. Here's Jock Peterson. It's a seven. That's also in play. So Ross playing with fire here with all these in play results. It's an 18. That's, that's the fire where he's going to get burned. 18 is a base hit. Base hit for Jock Peterson. And Turner, who runs at a six will score automatically. Two base advancement on that on those two out hits with the runner rated six. Puig will move to third automatically because he is a rating of seven. So a 
that's a Stratomatic single star star for you right there. So now it's 3 nothing in favor of the Dodgers. Here's A.J. Ellis. It's a 7, which is again in play. And it's a 96 this time, so he'll get out of it with a fly to left. Innings over, but the Dodgers tack on another run. And things just keep getting worse for the Padres to try to get back in this game. They are now down 3 to nothing against the Dodgers. And Kershaw doesn't seem to be in the mood to allow a lot of runs here, so we'll see what happens. Kershaw against Spangenberg. I think that's how it's pronounced. Spangenberg, Spangenberg, something like that. Five is tough. So Kershaw, tough. And it's a five. Tough five is a strikeout. Three strikeouts in a row for Kershaw. And you can see these low numbers. Had that been in play, that would have been a base hit. So, difference between Kershaw and Ross right there. Here's John Jay. I'm sorry, we're at the pitcher spot, Ross. Nine. Nine is tough. And tough. And Ross is a batting card number three. If we go to batting card number three for the pitcher, if it's in the tough range, just note you don't even have to roll the two D10s because it's an automatic strikeout. So, Ross didn't even have to move the bat. He just struck out. So that's four strikeouts in a row for Kershaw. And that's an eight. Eight is tough again. So Kershaw's finding those tough categories. It's a 92. A 92 is a grounder to short. And that's going to end the inning. Nothing doing for the Padres. It's a good thing Kemp got his double because the Padres were... Looking to get no hit by Kershaw because he has no hit stuff today, apparently, the way it seems. Start the top of the fourth. Ross back out there facing Chase Utley, the top of the order. I'm sorry, it'll be Kershaw. Kershaw, the batter, he will lead off. He singled his first time up. It's an eight. And this time we found a tough category, finally. And that usually means a strikeout for the pitcher. Batting card number five, tough. Absolutely. It's going to be a strikeout. We don't even have to roll the 2D20s or 2D10s. So... Kershaw out on strikes, but he doesn't care. He's pitching a gym. And here's Chase Utley. It's an eight. Eight is tough, so two, two toughs in a row for Ross. Makes a big difference. 92, that'll help too. 92 is a fly to left for Utley. For out number two. And that brings up shortstop Corey Seager. It's a 12. 12 is ballpark. We had our first ballpark check, and we're in Petco, which does not yield too many home runs. Particularly the left-handed batters. Left-handers need a 1 to 38 to be in the wheelhouse. So let's see if Seeger can do it. He does not. 89 means it's in play. So we got an in play at bat for Seeger. And it's a 93. In play 93 is a fly to left. And the inning's over. That time Ross went 1, 2, 3. And Petco helped him out a little bit there. That huge terrain out in left field, left center. So. Nothing doing for the Dodgers here in the top of the fourth. Kershaw back out. We'll be facing Derek Norris, the catcher. Norris fly to right his first time up. It's a six. And lo and behold, we're tough again for Kershaw. Nothing new there. It's a 32. A 32. Tough 32 is a sh another strikeout. So Norris goes down on strikes. That is strikeout number six already for Kershaw. That'll bring up Matt Kemp. He doubled his first time up. Only hit for the Padres so far. Five. He found the tough range again. And it's a 43 for Kemp. 43 tough against a lefty. Kemp, Kemp's got his number. Kemp with another single. Single to left field for Matt Kemp. He's two for two. He is the only Padre that seems to have figured out Kershaw. Here's Will Myers. Myers, a six, is tough again. And it's a 96, so that's not good. 96, fly to left. Two down. That'll bring up Alexi Ramirez, former Chicago White Sox. Shortstop, now a Padre shortstop. 10, 10 is tough. 10 is tough again. And we got a 68. A tough 68. Tough 68 is out of range. 68 is a ground ball to second. So the inning is going to be over. Technically a fielder's choice. They will Utley will flip to Seeger four to six for the force play on Kemp. And the bottom of the fourth is all over. After four complete, it is the Dodgers four. I'm sorry, the Dodgers three, Padres nothing.
All right, we start the top of the fifth, and the fatigue inning for Ross is this fifth inning. And he's also scheduled to bat fourth in the bottom half of the inning. So lefty Ryan, I guess it's pronounced Buckter. I almost thought it was Butcher at first, but it's Buckter. I, I believe it's how it's pronounced. It's Buckter. He is a lefty. He is in the Padre bullpen in case Ross can't make it out of this inning. And we may get a double switch or something like that. We'll see. Right now, Justin Turner is up. Turner, two for two, two singles and a run scored. It's a five, and that, of course, is in play. They've been in play against Ross almost the whole game. And that's a double zero, so we have an unusual play, or rare play, I guess it's called. So we go to the rare play chart. Anytime you roll a double zero, you go to the rare play. And there's two rare play uh, results, one for bases empty, one for runners on base. In this case, we have bases empty. So we're going to roll the two D6s again and see what we get in here. And we get a five. So a five. Line drive single hits pitcher. Check for injury. Runners advance one base. So Turner gets his base hit. He's now three for three. And that line shot came off of Ross. And his injury, he's normal injury. Normal injury. So we're going to go to the injury chart here. And he's normal. So if we roll on the two D10s, a zero through 30, he'll be able to stay in the game. If uh, it's a 31 to 50, he's injured in the main part of the game. Anything else, we got injuries totaling up here. So right now, I'm going to roll the two D10s and check the chart. It's a 72. Oh, that was a 7 there. 72. Says he's injured remaining plus three games. So Tyson Ross will have to come out after getting that line drive off of him. So that's going to do it for Ross. Probably good to get him out of there anyway. He was getting hit around pretty good. So, Ryan Buckter. Ryan Buckter is the new pitcher. And the Padres are going to they're going to stick with Buckter. They're not he's more of a one-inning guy, so there's no sense in doing any kind of double switches. They're just going to let him pitch this inning, and see if he can get through this inning and then turn it over to somebody else. So, lefty Ryan Buckter is in to face the lefty Adrian Gonzalez. So Buckter facing Gonzalez. It's a six. That's tough. Six is tough. Gonzalez a 69. Tough 69 against a lefty is out of range. 69 is a ground ball to second. The two D6s are a six. Double play rating for Buckter is an eight. That's greater than six. Double play rating for Gonzalez is an eight. That's greater than six. So we have a four, six, three double play. Turn by the Padres. And that will help slow down the Potential for the Dodgers to score this inning. Now there's two out spaces empty for Yasiel Puig. He's one for one, single and a walk. Eight is tough for Buckter. So he's bringing some tough pitches to the table. 69. Tough 69 against the lefty is out of range. It only goes to 54. So 69 is another ground ball to second. So Buckter comes in, gets two ground ball outs, and gets out of the inning. And now we can close the book on Ross finally. So we'll be back in the bottom of the fifth to get the Padres going at bat and get the totals on Ross. All right, we can close the book on Ross. Four plus innings, eight hits, three runs, all earned, one, one walk and two strikeouts. Now, Buckter pitched a very good relief outing, facing just two batters to get three outs. He is scheduled to bat fourth this inning, so if they get to his hitting spot, Carlos Villanueva is loosening the Padre bullpen and would come in if they have to pinch hit for Buckter. Right now, Salarte to lead things off against Kershaw. He struck out his first time up like many people did. Six is tough, so we're in the tough range again. Could be another strikeout. It's a 64. 64, tough 64. Out of range, only goes to 48. 64 is a fly ball to right field that Puig will handle easily. One away for Melvin Upton, Jr., an 8. 8 is tough again for Kershaw. And we got a 13. Guess what that is, boys and girls? That is a strikeout. Low number, tough strikeout. Two down for Corey Spangenberg. It's a 3. 3 is patient. We finally got a patient one out of Kershaw. It's a 96, however. And that's a fly to left. So the inning is over. And we did not get to Buckter's uh, relief innings or at bat, so 
he's going to stay in the game, at least temporarily, as Carl Crawford, the lefty, is up. He's got Crawford and Peterson, two lefties, coming up, so they're going to keep Buckter in there at least to face those two. As we start the top of the sixth, Carl Crawford, it's a two. Two was in the wheelhouse, so Crawford has found a wheelhouse as Buckter has put one in there right in Crawford's wheelhouse, but against lefties, Crawford's not going to do much. Only a 1-11 to 11 would be a hit. It's a 64, so that takes it to a ground ball to second. So Crawford missed it. Being a lefty, he didn't have much of an opportunity there. So here is Jock Peterson, another lefty-on-lefty -lefty matchup. It's a 7. 7 is tough. And a 67. Tough 67 against a lefty. He just missed it. 66 would have been a base hit. 67, however, is a ground ball to second. And that's four consecutive batters. He's faced all four batters, and all four batters have grounded to second base. That's very unusual. He's got four ground balls to second base. All right, here is A.J. Ellis. It's a nine, which is patient. Patient 94. 94, however, is a fly to left, and that's going to do it. And so two stellar innings turn in by Buckter. He didn't allow anything. No, no walks, no strikeouts, no hits, no nothing. But he bridged the gap a little bit uh, after the starter, Ross, got injured on that line drive. So Buckter has gotten his job done. We'll be right back with a pinch hitter for the Padres and talk about the new pitcher coming into the top of the sixth or top of the seventh for the Padres as well. Okay, we go to our tote board, and we'll see that Buckter, since he was used, has been removed. And Villanueva, since he will be coming in, he'll be removed. And the pinch hitter that's going to be used is Adam Rosales, so he will be removed. So the Padres will send up Adam Rosales as a pinch hitter for the pitcher Buckter against Kershaw. But unless your name is Matt Kemp, it may not matter because Kershaw has pretty much dominated everybody else. We'll see what he does against Rosales. It's a six for Kershaw. Kershaw six is, once again, tough. So Rosales has to deal with a tough Kershaw offering. It's a nine, and that means, you know what that means, a low number on the tough is a strikeout. So Rosales, much like his compadres, pardon the pun, has struck out again. And that'll bring up John Jay, top of the order. Nine is tough again for Kershaw. And it's an eight. Low number. Strikeout. You guessed it. Another strikeout for Kershaw. And that'll bring up Derek Norris. And you got the feeling that Padres just aren't going to be able to touch Kershaw today unless Kemp gets into one. Eight is tough. Tough 43. Tough 43 is another strikeout. So Kershaw strikes out the side here in the sixth. You would think he's... Might be getting a little tired, but it seems to be he's just in the groove right now. We go to the seventh, and the new pitcher for the Padres is the aforementioned Carlos Villanueva, right-hander. And he'll be facing Chase Utley. I'm sorry, Kershaw. Keep forgetting to put that pitcher card in there. Kershaw will lead off. Let's see what Villanueva does. It's a four. That's in the wheel. He put, the, he put one in Kershaw's wheelhouse. Now, Kershaw uses pitcher hitting card number five. So the wheelhouse, we've got up to 23 for a base hit for Kershaw. So if it's anything above 23, Kershaw will still be out. It's a 35, so Kershaw is out. And a 35 is a pop-up to the second baseman, Spangenberg. So Villanueva got away with one there. Good thing he was facing the pitcher, or else that could have been trouble. Here is Chase Utley. It's a nine. That's in play. And for Utley, an in-play 52. In-play 52 is out of range. 52 is a ground ball to third. So that's a 5-3 put out for out number two. And that'll bring up Corey Seeger. Seeger's 0 for, 2, 0 for 3 this game. 5 is ballpark, so we get to go to see if we've got a, a wheelhouse or an in-play again. Petco Park, a pitcher park, only goes to 38. And that's a 57, so that means we're going to be looking at in play for Seeger, which means he needs a 39 or less to get a hit. 
And he got it to 31. 31 is a base hit. So Corey Seager, a two-out single. Two-out single for Corey Seager. He only stole three bases on the year, so they're not going to try him. They're going to let Justin Turner come to the bat with two outs and run it first. It's a five, which is ballpark. So now for right-handers, 1-53 to 53 is in the wheelhouse, so he may have put one in Justin Turner's wheelhouse. He did not. It's a 59, so that means it's in play for Justin Turner. In play, a 37. In play, 37. He just missed it. Would have been 36. Would have been a hit. 37 instead is a pop-up to the third baseman, Spangenberg. I'm sorry, uh, third baseman, Salarte. So the inning is over. Seventh inning stretch time, and I'm going to stretch with them and take a quick break. At the end of uh, six and a half, it's still the Dodgers three and the Padres nothing. All right, bottom of the seventh, Matt Kemp's the only one who's figured out Kershaw today. He's two for two, a single and a double. That's a 12, so that's defense. So we have a defensive check, and we've got a 73. So if we look at the defensive chart under number 73, we're going to see that is an error check on the shortstop, Corey Seager. So Corey Seager, his error rating is a 2. So go over here to Petco Park, a 2, a 1 through 52 will be an error. Anything else will be an out. That is a 96, so that is an out. Now we need to see what, see what kind of an out. It's a 3. So a 3 on an out chart for the shortstop is a, is a ground ball. Almost a line out, but it's a ground ball. So it's a simple 6-3 ground out. And Kemp unable to solve Kershaw for a third time. Brings up Will Myers. That's an 8, which we're back to the tough. Myers, it's a 99. So that's not going to help. It's a fly to left. Two down for Alexei Ramirez. Ramirez, a 12, so that's defense again. And it's a 2. So defense and a 2 is a range check on Kershaw. Kershaw's range is a C. So we go to Petco Park, C, range, 1 to 44 is a hit. Anything higher than 44 will be an out. It's a 21, so that's a base hit. So a two-out Infield single for Alexi Ramirez. A little number off the bat that he was able to beat out Kershaw, not able to get off the mound, mound fast enough to field it. So there's two outs for Salarte. I rolled 31, but I should have rolled the D6, two D6s first, huh? All right, four. Four is in play. In play 31 is what I rolled against a lefty. That's a base hit. In play lefty against a lefty, 12 to 35 is a base hit. So it's a base hit for. Salarte, Ramirez is only a five base running, so he's only going to go one base. Particularly down by three, they're not going to take the chance. That extra base isn't really going to matter that much unless the next batter, Upton, does something. So Melvin Upton steps to the plate. Two on, two out. Best chance for the Padres all game. Five is tough, though. And a nine, so a low number. Tough nine is a strikeout. And Kershaw. Finishes out the top of the seventh. Still scoreless. We go to the top. We go to the top of the eighth. It's the Padres trailing three to nothing. Top of the eighth. Carlos Villanueva for his second inning of work, and Adrian Gonzalez will step to the plate. Kershaw has eleven strikeouts through seven innings. Here is Gonzo. Adrian Gonzalez, a ten, which is patient. Haven't had a lot of walks in this game. Patient in a 94, so we're still not going to have a walk. 94 is a fly to left. So Gonzo is out of there. The fly to left. Here's Yasiel Puig. Puig, a 6. 6 is in play. And it's a 96. So a 96 in play is another fly to left. Two down for Carl Crawford. So Carl Crawford. It's a 5, which is ballpark. So, again, though Petco only goes to 38 for the wheelhouse. But he found it, 23, so we are in the wheelhouse for Crawford. However, he had no home runs on the year, so his best bet, best chance is probably a single, and that's if he gets a 24 or less. And he did. He got a 23, so it's a base hit for Carl Crawford. Two-out single. Carl Crawford, a two-out single. And that will bring up Jock Peterson. Six, which is in play. 
for Peterson. It's a 75, so in play 75 is a fly to center. And that's going to end the inning. And two shutout innings turned in by Villanueva. So the Padre bullpen doing its job. Villanueva pitched two innings, gave up two hits and nothing else. And no walks, no strikeouts. And he's scheduled to bat second this inning, so he will be pinch hit for. So we're going to go to the bottom of the eighth as we get the pinch hitter for the Padres scheduled up and the new pitcher in the bullpen for the ninth. We go to the bottom of the eighth. Kershaw still rolling. It is 3-0 Dodgers. Okay, we'll check our little tote board here. And Jabari Blash is going to be the pinch hitter for the Padres batting second this inning, so we'll take him out of there. And the new pitcher for the Padres in the ninth will be Kevin Quackenbush. So we'll take Quackenbush and mark him off the list. Of course, the Dodgers haven't used anybody because they haven't needed to with Kershaw rolling like this. So Kershaw out there will be facing Corey Spangenberg to start off the bottom of the eighth, and then the pinch hitter Blash, and then the top of the order John Jay. Uh, fatigue getting for Kershaw. He can get through. He's actually starting now here in the eighth, but he's rolling, so should not be a problem. Six is tough. Found another tough category for Spangenberg. That's a 38. 38 for Spangenberg. Tough against a lefty is yet another strikeout. Strikeout number 12 for strikeout number 12 for Kershaw. And now Jabari Blash, the pinch hitter, steps up. It's a four, which is in play. So four is in play, but he needs a one to six to get a hit. Not likely. In fact, he got an 81. So an 81 is a ground ball to short. Grounder to Seeger. Two down. So Blash out of there in his pinch hitting performance. And that brings up John Jay. It's a seven, which is in play. And we got a five. In play five is usually pretty good when you got in play. That's a double for John Jay, one to nine against the lefty. So a double for John Jay. And that brings up Derek Norris. Derek Norris, it's a seven. Seven is in play. For Norris, it's an 81, though. So an in play 81. In play 81 is a grounder to short. So 6-3 ground out ends the inning. And Kershaw has made it through eight. And he has not given up anything. We go to the ninth. Score still Dodgers three, Padres nothing. All right, we start at the top of the ninth with the Dodgers leading three nothing. It's currently a save situation, so Kenley Jansen is in the bullpen. However, if the Dodgers score in the top of the ninth, it will not be a save situation. So they'll also have Chris Hatcher in the bullpen. So depending on what the Dodgers do in the top of the ninth will depend on who the new pitcher is going to be. Kershaw's day is done. He pitched eight. Very good innings, obviously. But he's going to be lifted for a pinch hitter because he is scheduled to bat second this inning coming up. And so the pinch hitter for the Dodgers is going to be, uh, let's see here who it's going to be. Looks like it's going to be Trace Thompson. So A.J. Ellis will lead things off, but then Trace Thompson will be your pinch hitter. So Trace Thompson will bat second this inning as he faces Kevin Quackenbush. Kevin Quackenbush. So Quackenbush will start things off here facing A.J. Ellis. It's a 9, which is patient. So A.J. Ellis in the patient category, a 33. Patient 33 against the righty is a walk. So there you have a walk. And he could be in a bunt situation now with Thompson. So do they want to use Thompson? He's only an F bunter. So they may be looking to look to see if there's anybody else on the bench that's a better bunter. They don't have a whole lot. Everybody on the bench is an F bunter. Uh, the pitcher spot, Kershaw. Let's see how they want to play this. Four to twelve. I'm looking here. It says four to twelve is a sacrifice. So I guess that's how you would play it. They don't really give him a bunt rating that I can see. Uh, let's look at his pitcher card just to be on the safe side. His pitcher card looks like his bunt rating is an A. So they're going to leave Kershaw into pinch. He's not going to get a pinch hitter. He's going to stay into bat for himself because of the fact he can sacrifice. So Thompson being called back, he was never announced. So he's being called back. And Kershaw steps in. And we're going to go to the sacrifice bunt chart. 
Sacrifice bunt chart. He is an A bunter. We roll the two D10s. And unless he... Uh, if he gets 7 to 92, he's got it. So almost guaranteed to get a bunt here. Let's see. It's a 24. Yep, sacrifice is good. We roll 1D6 to see who fielded it. That's a 6. 6 says it's the catcher. So it's a sacrifice bunt fielded by the catcher. Derek Norris, so he will go two to four on the sacrifice as second baseman was covering first. Ellis will move up to second base, so there's runner on second with one out. And back to the top of the order and Chase Utley. Chase Utley, the batter. Chase Utley. It's a six. Six is tough against Quackenbush. And it's a ten. Tough ten against a right-hander is a strikeout. Those Low numbers in the tough category, usually strikeouts. All right, Corey Seager, last chance for the Dodgers to extend the lead. It's an eight. That's uh, in play, in play for, off of Quackenbush. And we got a 30. An in play 30 for Seager is a base hit. In play 30 is a base hit. A.J. Ellis will score because it's two outs. He's got a run rating of seven. So anytime you're over six and there's two outs, that scores the run. So... The save situation has been eliminated. So, closer, Kenley Jansen has sat down as the Dodgers now have a 4 nothing lead. And that'll bring up Justin Turner. And Kershaw is technically still in the game, so he could finish this out. It's a 3. 3 is ballpark. So, ballpark with the right-hander, 1-53 to is the wheelhouse. And he's found the wheelhouse, so Justin Turner... A 1 to 58 would be a two run homer. And it is a 10. That's a two run shot for Justin Turner as the Dodgers have just blown this thing wide open against Quackenbush. A two run shot off of Quackenbush. Three runs in now. It is now a 6 0 ball game. And Jock Peterson, the batter. An 8, which is in play. And a 10. In play, 10. In play 10 is a double for Jock Peterson. So it's an in play 10. It's a double for Jock Peterson. And they're just going to leave Quackenbush out there to take the brunt of this. Here is Adrian Gonzalez. It's a 4. That's tough. And a 68. Tough 68. Tough 68 is a grounder to second. And the inning's finally going to be over. But the Dodgers pick up three runs here in the ninth. And we go to the bottom of the ninth. Kershaw going back out there trying for the complete game shutout. It is Dodgers 6, Padres nothing. All right, top, uh, bottom of the ninth, Chris Hatcher is still loosely in the Dodger bullpen just in case Kershaw fades. But they're going to give him every opportunity to finish this game with a 6 nothing lead. And his nemesis, Matt Kemp, is stepping to the plate. Kemp's 2 for 3. Against Kershaw, a 6 is tough, though. He's been in that tough category almost the whole, entire game. It's a 78, so a tough 78 is going to be a fly out to center field. Jock Peterson handles that, no problem. And that'll bring up Will Myers as Kershaw's two outs away from an opening day shutout. Seven is in play. Will Myers in play, 83. In play, 83 is another fly out to Peterson in center. So one out away, and Kershaw will do it. He's kind of going on fumes a little bit, but... Buffered, bu buffered by the three runs that he got in the top of the ninth game. A little bit of extra time to rest. So he's going out there to finish what he started. Here's Ramirez. It's a 12. That's defense. And we've got a 92. So a defense 92. Defense 92 is an error check on the left fielder. So the left fielder in this case is Carl Crawford. He's an error rating of 5, which is the best. So it has to be a 1 to 23 in order for there to be an error. And there is not. It's a 90, so that's a fly out to left, and the ball game is over. So Kershaw has done it. A 6 nothing whitewashing of the Padres. And we'll be right back with the totals. All right, we'll check the totals for the Dodgers. Six runs, 13 hits, no errors. For the Padres, no runs, five hits, no errors. Winning pitcher, Kershaw. Complete game shutout, five hitter. Didn't walk anybody, struck out 12. Pretty much in control the entire way when the Dodgers gave him the two-run lead in the second. was probably over at that point. Uh, 
Tyson Ross, tough, tough luck loss, four plus, had to leave the game when he got a line drive hit back at him. Gave up eight hits and three runs. Bullpen did pretty well. Buckter and Villanueva pitched four innings of shutout relief, but then Quackenbush kind of gave it up there in the ninth with that uh, three runs highlighted by the Justin Turner two-run shot. So that's it. Payoff pitch baseball, opening day 2016 for these two teams at Petco Park. Final score again, the Dodgers six and the Padres nothing. And we'll see everybody down the road.